Hello, welcome to Chats with Chelsea. Today is the season three finale. I cannot believe it. I still remember earlier this year where we had pressed pause for a few months to build the Chats with Chelsea set. Do you all remember? We literally built a set with lights, cameras, and I've only been able to use it once. And that was for a Chats with Chelsea teen episode. 2020 has been a year that none of us could have imagined, none of us could have planned for. But for each of you listening in this moment, I want you just to take a moment to express gratitude to God because you are here, you're alive, you're in your right mind. That's just, that's deserving of a moment. I still remember when I was bummed that, you know, COVID had hit and so therefore I was not able to film in person. And I still remember when my husband pushed me and said, listen, this is what the world is looking like, at least for the next few months. You have to pivot. You have to keep going if this is what you want to do. And so season three launched and it has been virtual. Um, I'm so grateful that it's been virtual because it's provided us with the opportunity to hear from women literally across the country. I want to remind you of some of the people and topics that we covered this year. We talked about white privilege in motherhood, which by the way, is the most watched YouTube chats with Chelsea, where we had Tracy Briscoe who came on. We heard from Dr. Kendra from Married to, uh, to Medicine. She came on and talked about childbirth. Um, in postpartum, in COVID. We talked about widowhood. We had a whole series on motherhood. Um, we talked about um, racial justice in the church. We have talked about so many different topics. And my prayer is that the mission of Chats with Chelsea has been fulfilled uh, this year, which is to empower you to live out your God-given purpose. And so that through these chats, if you've, as you've heard from women, as you've heard their journeys, as you've heard their stories of overcoming, as you've heard how they struggled, that in that you have been empowered, you have learned so that you can be all that God calls you to be. When I think about my purpose, when I think about the Life with Chelsea brand, when I think about Chats with Chelsea, our foundation, it is about, it's about empowerment. As someone who grew up in the urban core, I know what hopelessness looks like and I will continue to do everything I can to be on the other side of that, which is empowerment, education, investment. And so I wanna say thank you to each of you who have watched. Uh, I, I, every now and then I look at some of our show statistics. Um, that's been an area that I've kind of struggled in because sometimes I've paid attention to it a great deal and then other times not as much. And I'm really coming to me to this healthy place of, God, you've given me this mission. You've given me this purpose. Um, Chats with Chelsea is one of the ways that I believe you called me to live it out. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it and not be concerned about how many likes our pages get, not being concerned about, you know, how many views. And so I looked at our statistics, y'all, and I was blown away in the month of August alone, just from the podcast platforms, 18,000 subscribers, 18,000 hits. Um, and I was completely blown away. I mean, typically um, for uh, each uh, month we're between a thousand three thousand sometimes last year we had several months of four or five thousand um, which was part of the encouragement to continue because if you look solely at our youtube page you're thinking oh my gosh only like 30 people are watching these videos when in actuality we have um we have the opportunity and we've been able to reach thousands of folks via the podcast platform. So I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for being with me this year, for um, being with me on the journey, the journey of exploring what this Chats with Chelsea looks like. How does this evolve? I'm so excited for season four already because because of season three, I had this year tons of people who reached out to me and said, I want to be on your show. Like, you want to be on my show? 
Um, and so we already have a list of individuals. There will be some, you know, global names on the show next season, as well as some names you may never, you may never have heard of, but they have a story and a journey that they want to share. And so how season four will look, I am still ironing it out. So make sure you are subscribed to the Chelsea Circle, which is my weekly newsletter for more. There were... There was a video that I said I was going to do this season, and I want to tell you why I'm not doing it. First off, happy World Vegan Day and happy World Vegan Month. As many of you all know, um, a few months ago, I went vegan. Um, I went vegan for health reasons, many different challenges, um, some diagnoses that are definite and some that we are kind of thinking that's what I may have. Along the way, in the process of preparing to um, share a video on why I went vegan, I submitted a chapter to a Christian publisher, a devotional chapter, and it was accepted. So if you are a part of my newsletter, um, Family Chelsea Circle, you know that my chapter was accepted. Um, I will be a published author. Our original publishing date was actually supposed to be November, but due to COVID, it's moved to January 2021. And so I am thrilled. It's going to be a great way to start off the year. The devotional um, will feature myself as long as well as 20 other black Christian women. So you're going to want to get your hands on this. And right now I am doing a uh, signed pre-order copies um, on my website. So you can go to lifewithchelsea.com and you'll see the option. Um, $25 and it'll be mailed to you and signed by me um, and so I'm thrilled about that but because of that chapter and because it is really one of the most vulnerable pieces I've ever written um, I truly believe God asked for me to write it to be that vulnerable um, and I also knew think that he knew that I kind of need that push to share my story and to not be ashamed or embarrassed of the health challenges that I've had to overcome you know because I think about one health challenge it's like okay that happens. But I mean, I've had diagnosis after diagnosis. I think the last time I counted um, a few weeks ago, in the past three years, maybe seven different diagnoses of things, some small, but some really big. And so all that to say, Chats with Chelsea community, I will be doing a, a video on why I went vegan, yet I wanted to correspond with this chapter that I did not know would be published uh, when season three started. So I'm keeping my word. It's just a little delayed. Um, and if you're not following me on Instagram, about once a week, I post a reel of something I've cooked um, from teriyaki tofu to, um, oh my gosh, I did this vegan quiche, which was absolutely one of my favorite. There's these vegan crab cakes that I make. Like I am in the kitchen. I'm loving it. I never thought that I would love to cook or love to bake. I made my first pie um, a few weeks ago. And so really just enjoying this process, accepting that this is what's best for me. I can tell you, you know, tell you that I am off of a medication since going vegan. I'm, a, I'm vegan, I'm gluten free, as well as I still am on a restricted diet. I'm not able to eat all fruits and vegetables at this moment. But again, I will be sharing that on a future video. I just want to remind you all that next, well, it's really this Tuesday, is election day. If you haven't already voted, please vote. I did a video last week, your vote matters, and your vote does matter. And I share with you how I examine different um, candidates and policies. And so I encourage you just to go take a listen to that video. Um, if you haven't voted, and even if you have, because I think that it can definitely be eye-opening for some of us as we think about future elections as well. Um, and again, your vote matters. So go take a listen to that. As we approach election day, um, as you all know, I have anxiety. I've written about it on my blog, so you can go um, take a look at that. I have at moments, especially as different text messages, people are sending me different things or this on that. This person said this, look who's endorsing. I could feel my anxiety rising. And so I want to leave you with 
a few things that has become important to me along my anxiety journey. And especially now, because we don't even know if we're going to know who our president is on Tuesday night, right? Let's just be real. We don't know. We may or we may not. And so you can have all these emotions and feelings. And so one, I want to encourage you to acknowledge the feeling that you're feeling. Then I want you to put in the work to ask yourself, what made me feel this way or who made me feel this way? And be completely honest. Um, I am, I consider myself pretty old school. So I love journals. Um, there's several behind me on my bookcases. And I like to journal. Um, I like to write. Even if it's on the, sometimes it's on the sticky, right? I just need to get the thought out. I need to understand what made me feel anxious. Um, and when you think about anxiety, it's about, you know, the impending future it's, it's, that's getting you all tight and tense. And so it's like, what is it about the future? Or what has this person said? Or what am I concerned about in the future that has caused me to become anxious? And when you do that, you have this either in your mind or on a piece of paper. This is what it is. I want you to go to the word of God for truth, right? And sometimes it will be a generic scripture a more general scripture around just anxiety to cast your cares upon the lord you know be careful for nothing but other times you know sometimes with my health it may be i need to be reminded you know by the stripes of jesus i am healed if there is a moment i'm becoming fearful that something's going to happen in my life i have to remind myself and get a little bit more specific that he said he'll never leave me nor forsake me i have to remind myself that he is with me um, that he created me he knew me before i was formed in my mother's womb and began to allow the word of god to rule and reign in my heart and in my mind and be there learn a new scripture meditate on the scripture that you may already know and then here is the other part that i think is so important and is sometimes lost especially um, in the christian world go do something you enjoy right we put god first but god still wants us to enjoy life god still wants us to be able to just enjoy life i love joyce meyer enjoying everyday life there's this biblical aspect this spiritual aspect but then there's this practical aspect and so some of you may remember on instagram i did a post about soul food and so the question becomes what is your soul food i know one of my soul foods is cooking and baking and so once I have that scripture in my heart, in my mind, or I have it written on a note card, I'm going to go cook or bake. I'm going to enjoy. I'm going to get myself active and going. And so over these next few days, these next few weeks, you acknowledge it. You acknowledge and figure out what made you become anxious. You find truth in the word of God and go enjoy life enjoy life for you that may be reading a book that may be netflix that may be going for a run that may be sewing or painting or calling a friend but i beg of you to make sure that after you have that word of god that scripture in your heart and in your mind and before you that you enjoy life because there are so many different pressures and stresses that are going on around us especially as covid is still here um, we're still living in a pandemic that I want you to be empowered to live life, live it on purpose, live it with the joy, live it with the smile. God gave us so many different things for us to enjoy. So let's be sure we enjoy them. And at the end of the day, you remember, no matter who's elected in whatever office, God is still God. God still cares for you. God still loves you. God will still provide for you. God is still going to comfort you. He's still your prince of peace, the most intimate love of your soul. God is still everything you need and could ever want. And so don't you allow what's going on around us to steal your joy, to steal your peace. Not that things are going to go how you want or not that, you know, there won't be different consequences because of the different results on the local, state and national level. I'm not saying that, but we do have a responsibility as humans and as Christians to take control of our thought life, to take control of our joy and to take control of our peace. So I love you all. Thanks for rocking with me season three. I think this has been the most adventurous one, but you all have been there. You all have shown up. You get ready for season four. Don't forget, go pre-order the devotional that I'll be featured in. Sign up for my weekly newsletter. And if you have any ideas for season four, email them to me. If there's any way I can be praying for you, email 
I am here for you. And in next season, we will be talking more about the life of Chelsea Foundation. So stay tuned.